This is a $50 PC. Yes, it's the one that I've been using for quite a while now and it's packing the i5-4460 which goes around 13 bucks on eBay. With the WinForce NVIDIA GeForce GTX 750Ti, wow that was a mouthful, which is a 2GB graphic card and goes around 33 bucks on eBay. And the goal for today is to hit 240fps in Fortnite and to make it even more challenging, I will try to hit 240fps in Fortnite without overclocking the CPU or the GPU. The reason being that it serves as a 100% safe guide for all of you to do the same with your potato PCs without blowing it up to bits. So smash that like button and let's dive into it. Launching up on Fortnite, I hopped onto Creative so that I can set a consistent benchmark environment. And I got around 100 FPS while looking at the sky, which may seem good to you, but keep in mind that it's creative at the lowest possible settings while doing literally nothing. So as soon as I dropped into an actual match, well, you can see for yourself the amount of lag and stutters, making the game pretty unplayable. The FPS were hovering around 50-ish at the lowest settings, however, they did keep dropping to as low as 6 and 9, causing massive stutters, especially during in intense fights or build scenarios or whenever your mom was on the screen. This was mostly because Fortnite is a CPU intensive game, meaning that our weak CPU was the bigger reason behind this poor performance compared to the GPU. So in conclusion, Fortnite was not playable at all. And if I had any hope to make it playable at all, I would need to optimize the hell out of this CPU. And at this point, I was as usual regretting my choices, but I knew that I couldn't back down and it was time to optimize this potato. I actually started off by completely reinstalling Windows to get rid of all the old useless data and start fresh, this gave me more room to work with since a clean Windows installation removes all the accumulated junk files, temporary data, and unnecessary programs that can slow down the computer over time. With almost no background processes or garbage running thanks to the clean reinstall, I could get significantly more performance out of the CPU, which was crucial for achieving those 200 plus FPS in Fortnite. After the fresh Windows install was complete, I made sure to only install the essential drivers and updates to to keep the system as lean as possible. Then I installed Fortnite in hopes of a miracle, though I knew we still had a lot of optimization ahead of us. Before diving into any third party tools, I first used this comprehensive guide to optimize Windows through its built in settings and tweaks. This involved adjusting various system configurations, power settings, visual effects, and performance options, all without downloading anything at all, just using what Windows already has built in. After that, I just followed this guide of mine to use the best free optimizer tools to optimize this $50 PC since it does need anything and everything if I hope to make Fortnite playable. I downloaded and installed Hone Optimizer which actually just got a new update so I proceeded to apply all of the optimizations that were available to me. Keep in mind that I do have the premium version meaning I unlocked all of the optimizations but even with the free version you get like 40 plus free optimizations which should give you a significant boost. Once I was done optimizing this low end PC with Hone, you can see that I went from 18% optimized to around 88% which is huge in terms of sheer numbers and maths I suppose. Then I went into the games tab and then selected Fortnite to apply the performance preset. This should help us get more performance out of Fortnite by applying the best settings. So yeah, let's see what it does. Next, I used the legendary Chris Titus Tech Windows utility to apply a few tweaks that are on part of Hone. These are just some specific things that I personally always apply to make sure that I'm getting the most performance from de bloated background processes and services. And this is a tool that I have always recommended to all of you too. And since it's free and open source, I really encourage you to give it a try. After that, I opened up the UNO Shutup 10 to remove pretty much all the telemetry and manage those pesky privacy settings so I can stop Microsoft from spying on my potato all the time reducing the 2 FPS that I barely get. This step was made easy thanks to importing my custom profile which had everything pre-applied once again from the same video. I'll leave the link in the description if you want these tools plus my custom profiles and you can get them on my discord server too. And finally I went on to use the Venero tweaker which is regarded as probably the best open source windows customization utility to simplify some windows settings on stock windows 10 and also get a bit more performance out of this old machine. What's great about Venero is is that it provides easy access to hundreds of hidden windows settings that would normally require complex registry edits to modify. I used my custom profile to quickly apply all of these optimizations which included disabling unnecessary visual effects, reducing system animations and tweaking various system behavior such as power, updates etc for better performance. After that I was running out of ideas as to what should I optimize next. 
But then I suddenly remembered that I was Reknetic and I had so many of my own guides that I could use. So I just followed this guide to optimize all the Nvidia settings to their best, including updating to the latest available driver for the GPU, but making sure to debloat that driver before installation and ensuring that every little setting in the control panel was optimized through using my custom Nvidia profile with the profile inspector. After that, I followed this guide to optimize this potato using registry and other tweaks included inside of the pack just so that I don't miss out on even an ounce of performance. After that, I followed this guide to disable all the useless services that were running in the background, eating up all the precious resources. I did this manually too since I did disable a lot of these services from the tools above, but I didn't want to leave even a single service that wasn't useful to me to be running around. This actually helped me a lot, not only to reduce the number of background processes down to almost half, but also improving the performance of the super low-end PC. And now that I had used some other guides to pretty much optimize every aspect of this PC, it was finally the time to test if all those optimizations had any impact on the performance and if I did manage to hit that 240 FPS in Fortnite, or if Fortnite was even playable in the newest season. So I loaded up Fortnite and jumping into creative while looking at the sky this time, well we couldn't hit 240 FPS unfortunately, but we did manage to get consistent 200 plus FPS and considering the fact that we didn't overclock anything at all, I'll consider this a pretty huge success. However, the real test was always seeing if we could manage to play an actual game lag free. So I immediately launched into a game and here are the FPS. As you can see, we were hitting around 100ish FPS consistently which did not drop that much either. Except when I was in an intense fight, it did stutter here and there but overall Fortnite was definitely playable now. I mean, we almost doubled our FPS, so yeah. But since we are already here, I decided to test it in a few other games as well. Starting off with Valorant. I hopped into the training range just to keep the benchmark consistent and I was getting around 240 FPS no problem on 1080p competitive settings. It did see minor FPS drops here and there, but nothing too crazy. So Valorant is definitely a huge success on this PC. Pretty lucky bastards who actually play Valorant over Fortnite without needing overpriced mechanical junk. Next up, I tried to win the FIFA World Cup for Ronaldo except I was driving on the field. So in Rocket League, while playing in a match, I was easily getting around 170 FPS with maximum hitting 200 FPS at 1080p medium slash low combination settings, so Rocket League is once again easily playable on the Spitato PC. Grand Theft Auto 5 was the next entry on my list and I was getting around 90 FPS at 1080p P almost high settings, making it one of the games that this PC is pretty suitable for, although it was killing the poor GTX 750 Ti with almost constant 100% usage, even though it's been 12 years since this game first launched, this was due to its 2GB VRAM being the limiting factor, which you can easily fix by bumping the settings down a bit. But this crushed my dreams of playing GTA 6 pretty soon. And with that crushed dream, Far Cry 5 was the last game that I decided to test. Launching up into the game, I had little hope, but at 1080p low settings, I was getting just shy of 60 FPS. So Far Cry 5 is once again definitely playable too on this Putero PC. Also Far Cry 4 is the best game in the series, it has nothing to do with this video but I just wanted to state the obvious out there. Oh and there is one more very important thing that I forgot to mention that can give you a tremendous boost in FPS. Psych.